Hi everybody, welcome to a new Amazing Max stuff video. Uh, in this video we're going to have some fun with G-Gen, trigonometry, simple stuff. And we will create some uh, wavy motion for our cubes. So, let's start. Okay, so this is the patch how we left it last time. And first of all I want to show you one thing, which is uh, how we can actually change the color of the, of actually of whatever, without having to manually type inside the numbers, uh, inside the attributes. So in order to do this, we can use an object called Swatch. So this Swatch object is this GUI object, which uh, outputs a list of four numbers, uh, which basically, uh, um, these are the numbers that compose the color that we are selecting with the mouse. So it's super cool because the format in which it outputs the numbers is by default between 0 and 1 and with the red, green and blue and alpha as the last, which is exactly the format that OpenGL accepts. So we can do something like this. We can say prepend erase color, touch this here and we attach this to our JIT world. And in this way, we can change the color of the JIT world simply by selecting it here. Okay, so for example, dark green looks nice. If we like the color, then we can do something like this. For example, we like the color, we say, okay, this is the color I want to use, actually. So we can even hard code it inside uh, the JIT world object. And so let's replace the old one. Let's put the new one. And this will be the color with which the object will start by uh, default. Okay, nice. Uh, we can use the same system to basically to change the color also of the, every other thing. But for example, let's start by changing the color of the, uh, the floor. The color of the floor. So let's attach this to the GGL grid shape. Instead of erase color, let's say prepend color. And we can actually start to change the color of the floor. Oh, this looks this looks really nice. So this looks really nice. Let's see which color is that. So this will be this color here. I just copy all of it and I passed it instead of the color that it was here before. Okay, and that's it. Alright, then uh, let's mm, let's start to make a little modification uh, to the to the pattern that we have here. So let's go into multiple, zoom in a bit. Let's go inside Gigen. Let's uh, zoom. Okay, first of all, uh, let's delete this actually this multiplier. And as you can see, we get this uh, we get this nice uh, kind of snake fluctuating. Let's connect this here and we can have it moving. Now, um, if you want more coils or less coils, we can uh, multiply this number before it goes inside the cosine and sine here. We can multiply, for example, by 2 and we get more coils. We can multiply by 0 0.5, we get less. Now, you see the fluctuation inside here. Ah, sorry, the telephone was uh, ringing. So I was saying, you see the, um, the fluctuations inside this coil, this we can change, this we can make more uh, apparent by multiplying this for a bigger number, for example, 10. So we have more fluctuations and then if we want them to be bigger, we can change this number. Let's keep it, let's keep it to 0 0.5. And if we want them to go faster, for example, let's make this go slower by multiplying this by 0 0.5, the time, and then let's multiply this by 3, so this will go faster, these fluctuations here. And let's multiply by 10, yes, so we get something like this. Let's keep it low at 5 or something like that. And then we have a little snake going around. Okay. So, just by experimenting a bit with this, uh, we can obtain so many different results. Just look at this. It's completely, completely different. If we want to make it slower, we can multiply this. Okay. 
let's for example multiply this by 20 <laughs> so everything uh, um, if we experiment a bit around we will get a lot of different results okay let's get it back to oops let's get this back to 10 and let's get this back to 0 0.5 Okay, but now I want to see something different. So something actually pretty easy, but a bit different. So what we do is just, let's just copy this gen. We can give to this gen a title. So we will call this uh, cylinder snake or something like that. And this will be, this is the algorithm that is here and we don't touch it for the moment. Now I want to create a different algorithm inside here. So um what we're going to do is basically so this is the noise let's basically delete all this stuff yes let's delete all this stuff okay and let's look at a new object which is norm now the norm object uh for every single cell of the incoming matrix which is by the uh, which is in this case 30 by 30 it will give us a coordinate that is relative to the single cell and uh, it contains the coordinate of the cell in the matrix um, um, normalized between 0 and 1. So what does this mean? For example, let's switch the x component. This is a, two, a 2D vector. It means he has x and y components. So if he switch the x component and we attach this here, Let's actually take a look at this with the GTP window. We can see that we get numbers. And let's actually also take a look with the JIT.cell block. Mm -hmm. We can see that on the, X, uh, uh, on the X dimension, we get numbers that grow from 0 to 1. Right? On all the... All the rows, we get the same, all the columns have the same value and uh, the rows uh, have, uh, no, sorry, all the rows have the same value and the columns have all the different values. They go from 0 to 1. And for the Y is actually the same, but they go in the Y dimension. So from 0 to 1, 0 starts uh, from the top and 1 is on the bottom. And from 0 to 1, they just, uh, uh, yeah. This is the normalized coordinates from 0 to 1. So every cell in this matrix is assigned a coordinate. Cool. Uh, what we can do is to use these uh, coordinates, for example, to give a position to our um, cubes. For example, if we do something like that, uh, we get this little uh, square here. Let's actually attach to the zeta. So we have... Um, the cubes that are, are all are all close together this is why we cannot really distinguish them but for example if we multiply this by 10 this will go from 0 to 10 and we will have our cubes on a plate very cool uh, the only problem here is that they go from 0 to 1 so not on the negative axis there is another object that comes in help in this case which is this S norm object, which basically does the same, but instead of going from 0 to 1, the coordinates now go from minus 1 to 1. So, exactly, for every cell of the matrix, we map the coordinates uh, in a way that they should go from minus 1 to 1. Let's actually reduce this to something like 5. Perfect, so it matches actually the underlying uh, floor. Very cool. And now let's create on this uh, on this floor, which is by the way really cool. Let's actually go full screen. I love it. It's really it's really amazing. It's really quite amazing. The quality you can reach with GGL material and uh, and different lights. Okay, so let's now create this wave effect. In order to do this, we will have to use again the time parameter. Let's take the cosine of the time and let's simply let's simply use the cosine as the y value. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, but that's not enough. 
that's actually not enough because we need to multiply the cosine for one of our position otherwise it will not be relative it will have nothing to do with uh, the actual coordinates it will only go it will only go to minus one to one um, without having anything to do with the actual position of the of the cubes okay so this now looks about right let's multiply this by something like 0 0.3 in order to get it smaller and what we need to do now if we want to have a real wave we have to multiply this by something so oh no sorry not this not this probably we have to multiply this by something like 10 exactly i'm wrong i'm wrong sorry i'm completely wrong Let's actually not multiply it, but actually add it. And now this should be better. So yeah, that's what I meant. Okay, cool. Took a while, but in the end we got it. Let's make it maybe 0 0.7. We want to go a bit faster, we can simply divide the time for a smaller number. And then we get a nice wave effect. So we have some waves, and yeah, that's pretty much it with the waves effect. Another thing that we can do is to make these waves start from the center. Okay, so in order to get the waves starting from the center, we don't have to sum these to the to only one of the axes, but we had to probably do something like this. Yeah, exactly. So basically, we have to use the length of this vector, which is so the length is like the, the Pythagorean theorem, so it will basically give us the length of every point from the center. So the vector that goes from the center of this uh, square to every, uh, every other point in the square. And then we use this, which is, uh, it looks like, it actually looks like, uh, let's create another out, uh, just to, uh, maybe four is a bit too much, out three, just to visualize how this looks like. So this looks, uh, oh, okay, let's connect it to, not to the multiply by five, but directly to the S norm. Yeah, this is how it looks like. So basically in the center this will be zero and it goes growing up uh, when it goes toward the sides of the square. Okay, so let's delete, let's delete this. Why there are so many outputs? Oh, okay, so let's connect this back to the five and uh, yeah, really cool. We can create also another multiplier. For example, let's multiply this by 10. So we will have more waves. Yep, yeah. and uh, that's it. We could even try to get more, more uh, cubes, but be careful because this could be a bit too much for your computer. So let's actually see. It's actually a bit too much even for my computer. Let's try to uh, decrease the dimensions of the shape even more. And uh, no, this was a bit too much, so let's try 5 and 5, uh, yeah, but still, not really worth it. Not really worth it, so let's go back uh, to 30 and 30, let's load bang, okay, and uh, looks a bit strange. Ah yeah, because every cube has a different scale. Let's actually not give to every cube a different scale. Let's just give it a fixed scale. I think this will look a bit better. Let's uh, give it a scale of 0 0.2. Yes, maybe a bit less. 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19. Still Still a bit too much. Let's try 16, 16, 16. Yeah, yeah, something like that. 
Yeah. So that's it. That's it. Let's try more waves. So let's multiply this by 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to keep this uh, short. I want to stop here. I think this is in per se is an interesting effect. Every question you have, just write me, follow me on Facebook at Amazing Max Stuff. Follow me on my Patreon where you can also support me and get more patches. Uh, link in the description. Keep maxing, keep having fun with Jitter. It's a wonderful world. It's getting always better and better with uh, Second 74 continuously improving it. So I see this is a, this is really a nice tool to use to create your visuals and uh, interactive installations and so on. And we will go on with this series of tutorials. So I will teach you everything I know eventually about this. So stay tuned and see you in the next video. Ciao.